Hi, eighth graders. Today we're going to do another digital citizenship lesson. And today's is going to be pretty short. It's just talking about being aware of what you share when you're online. Um, I think every time we go online, sometimes on purpose and sometimes not, we share a lot of information. And online privacy isn't just what you say and post, but it's also your settings on your different apps that you have. So we're just going to basically learn how we can protect our privacy when we're online today. Um, and first of all, let's just take a look at this um, little meme, this little comic strip. Um, <clears throat> it's just asking, you know, that about the bottom image, it's showing someone's reaction to learning that their mind was being read. And even though mind reading might seem like a really cool power to someone to have, it would actually be pretty scary for everyone else. And we all have thoughts that we don't intend or want others to know. And there are private thoughts. And we would probably feel embarrassed or vulnerable if someone else knew them. So not sharing our private thoughts is an example of privacy, um, which is protection from being observed or tracked by others. And this includes protection from other people as well as groups of people like companies, the government, or the general public. <clears throat> Legally, we all have certain rights to privacy, but we have to make sure we know how to um, exercise those rights of privacy when we are online. Okay, has anyone seen a screen like this before? And um, this is a sign up for Snapchat, okay? And it's, many of you have probably seen it, especially if you have chat Snapchat. It's similar to other apps like Instagram and things like that as well, okay? And when someone signs up for and uses Snapchat, what information do you think they're sharing and who are they sharing it with? Okay, so it's obviously asking for your birthday, um, it's asking for a phone number, so that provides a lot of private information. Now, you can't sign up without that because they do have rules on how old you have to be um, also. Um, so the first way to protect your information is to understand what companies are collecting about you. And if there's something that students don't want companies or others to know about, they shouldn't provide or post it. Okay, companies get information about you by tracking what you do. And one way they do this is by using cookies. Um, a cookie is a small text file placed on your device by the sites you visit that collect information about your device and your activity. And I, I'm sure some of you have seen when you go to certain websites, you have to click accept or no, don't collect cookies. Um, I think most of the time people just click accept. Okay, cookies are good because they can give you um, information, they can track that information and things that you like to see, and it helps with your ads and it helps with things like that, but maybe you don't want companies getting that information from you. So if you are not comfortable with this kind of tracking, you can turn your cookies off in your browser settings. You can usually find the setting in the privacy settings. Um, you should know that this might affect your browsing experience because it helps the websites automatically know helpful things about you, like your location or your preferences, but protecting your privacy is more important than that in many cases. Okay, so what did these screens show and what could you use them for? These screens are settings screens in different apps, okay? And the they are basically settings that you can adjust. There are going to be defaults and they're going to be defaults that the company wants to collect information on you. Okay, that they're going to be set to default. So going into these privacy settings is going to mean you can opt out of different things. So if you don't want them to see your location or don't want others to see your location, this is where you will make that happen. Okay. Um, Opting out just means to choose not to participate in something, and um, that's a really, really important thing to do, especially if you're young and you don't want somebody seeing your location. That's a really important thing. So tips for protecting your privacy, again, turning off your cookies and then reviewing the app's privacy settings and opting out of any sharing options you're not comfortable with. And it would be a good idea to talk to your parents about that. What do they want you to be signed up for and not signed up for? Um, a privacy policy, every app or um, website must provide this. 
okay? And there's also terms of service. So those are usually super long and confusing, but it is important to kind of skim those and make sure you're not signing up for something that um, you don't want to be a part of. Something we can do um, when we are looking at protecting our privacy is use the ASK acronym. Um, ASK stands for accessed, what will be accessed. So when we're looking at the privacy policy, ask yourself that, what of your private information is going to be accessed? S is for shared, what will be shared with people or other companies? Usually you can opt out of that. And K is for known, what could be known about me if I use this? We're gonna watch this short video about just different ways to protect your privacy and then we'll move on and get our books checked out for the day. Now you have what you need. Welcome to Trend Micro Cyber Academy, the place to learn the skills you need to keep the internet safe and fun. In this episode, you'll learn how to protect your privacy and personal information online. We use many devices to connect to the internet. There are so many apps, websites and games we love because they're so fun to use and a lot of them are free but all of these apps and games collect information about you like your name passwords photos things you click on share watch search for and even things you say to others that information is private and tells a story about who you are everything you do online stays online forever even if you delete it there will always be a digital footprint so how can you make sure that certain things stay private and don't get into the wrong hands? Well, that's easy. You need to have strong privacy skills. Here are four easy ways to protect your privacy online. One, use apps that are safe. Stick to apps and games that do a good job of protecting your privacy. If you don't know which ones are good, ask a grown-up, or you could research it together online. Two. Always think carefully about what you do and what you share online. Never feel pressured to give away your personal details or photos to an app or game or anyone who asks, even to your friends. And maybe you let your parent or grown-up know. Three, use the privacy settings in every app and game that you use. That way, only people you know can see what you're doing. Every app has settings to protect you and your personal information. Ask a grown-up if you're unsure how to set it up and check out our episode on security. Remember, the company who owns the app can still see everything you're doing. So be positive and careful with what you do and say online. Four, treat others the way you want to be treated and respect their privacy too. If you don't have your friend's permission to share something about them, don't share it. So remember, here's how you can practice strong privacy skills. Using apps that are safe, thinking carefully before you do or share anything online, using privacy settings, and respecting other people's privacy. Now you have what you need to take the privacy skills challenge. Do the privacy quiz next. And if you want to build up more cyber safety skills, then check out our next episode in Trend Micro's Cyber Academy.